Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today I'll show you how to use an Elgato Stream Deck to execute commands really quickly in Roll20. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So what is a Stream Deck? Well, it's a USB keypad with customizable LCD buttons, and these buttons can have any sort of action assigned to them. You can do things like open websites, or launch programs, or execute predefined sets of keystrokes. A lot of content creators will use Stream Decks during their Twitch streams or in order to create YouTube videos, but really they can be used to automate any sort of operation with just about any program. And today, I'm going to show you how I use my Stream Deck when I run Roll20 games. Now, the prerequisite to doing many of the things I'm about to show you is to enable advanced keyboard shortcuts in your game. So click on the settings gear in the top right of the screen and then go down to Keyboard Shortcuts and tick this Use Advanced Keyboard Shortcuts box. And incidentally, a full list of all the advanced keyboard shortcuts is available here on this web page. I will drop a link to this down in the video description. Okay, so with that done, you can program what each Stream Deck button does using this software. And each of these slots represents one button on the physical Stream Deck. And over on the right, we have a list of all the different types of operations that those buttons can perform. So the first scenario we're going to look at is measuring something on the battle map in Roll20. And you probably know you can come over here to the ruler, click on it, and then you can measure from one token to another spot on the map using the ruler. And then when you're done, you click on the select tool to be able to highlight tokens again. But what I find is I usually click the ruler button and I do my measurement and then I want to do something else. I want to move this token now or I want to do something else with it and I can't because I've forgotten to flip back to the select tool. So what we're going to do with the Stream Deck is create one of these buttons that will allow us to easily toggle between the ruler and the select tool with just the click of a button. So here's how we're going to set that up. We're going to start out with what's called a multi-action switch. And I'm just going to drag that right onto the spot where I want the, the button to be. We're going to put it right here. And a multi-action switch allows you to execute a series of commands. And then when those commands are done, a second set of commands gets queued up and ready to run. Okay, so let's jump over to our advanced hotkeys for a second here. And we can see that there is a hotkey that says measure snap to center if we press Q on the keyboard and then the number one that will be exactly the same as coming here and saying snap to center so let's set up the stream deck to do that for us okay so the first thing we want to do is grab what's called a hotkey and a hotkey is just used to press a button on the keyboard so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drag on that hotkey and we're going to give that hotkey a title. We're going to call it Q because we're going to press Q. So I've clicked on the hotkey button here. It says it's observing keystrokes, which means that it's watching everything I press right now. So I'm going to press Q. There we go. And then we also want to press the number one right after we press Q. So we're going to do that with another hotkey. Drag that on here and we're going to call that hotkey one. Click to assign and we're going to press the number one. Okay, and that means that when we press the button, this multi-action is going to fire, it's going to press the Q, and then it's going to press the 1, and that will be the same as if we'd come over to the ruler and selected Snap to Center. Now we can give this button a title, we're going to call it Ruler. We can give this button its own custom image as well, I'm going to click on the little plus icon right here, there's a bunch of free icons that you can download from the Stream Deck site. And I'm going to use this image right here for the ruler. So I'm just going to click on that. There we go. And now we also want to set up what happens after the Q and the 1 get pressed. We want to get the select tool queued up right after that. So for that, we're going to click on the 2 here. This is the second sequence of commands that are going to be run. And this is also going to be another hotkey. The hotkey to go back to the select tool is just the letter S. So we're going to assign the letter S to this hotkey. And then this set of operations can have its own title and its own icon as well. So we're going to call this select and I'm going to give it its own icon. I think this looks good for that. Cool. All right. So now 
we can toggle between the two versions of the button by clicking on these little dots or by clicking on the numbers up here. Okay, so now when we're done, we can click on this back button here and we can see the button is ready to activate the ruler. So I'm going to come back into roll 20. We're going to select the select tool like normal. So now we're in combat. Our bard wants to see if one of his spells can reach this, all the skeletons. So we want to measure. So we're going to press the ruler button. All right. So when we press the ruler button, you're going to see two things happen. First, over here on the left, the ruler toolbar button has been selected. And if we look, we see that we are snapping to center, which is the same as pressing Q1. So that worked exactly perfectly. Additionally, the stream deck button changed and it's toggled from ruler to select. So now we make our measurement and then we just press the button again and we're back into select mode. So we don't need to go back to the toolbar button. We don't need to remember to do anything. We've got that one button that's just queued up. We can press it whenever we want to switch between ruler and the select tool. And then it's just much faster and smoother to switch between these operations in the middle of your game. Now, this same process can be applied to moving an object across layers. You're probably familiar with the right click menu on a token, right click, say layer, and then you can move it between the map, the token layer and the GM layer. But we can do the same thing with hotkeys. And that means we can do the same thing with the stream deck. So the advanced keyboard shortcut to move something to the GM layer, for example, is pressing the L key followed by the K key. So let's click on a new empty slot in the stream deck. And just like before, we're going to use a multi action. But this time we're just going to use a regular multi action. We're not going to use a switch. So this is just going to be one set of commands. that's going to be run one after the other. And just like before, we're going to use hotkeys for this. So we're going to grab our hotkey operation here. And the first key we're going to press is the L. And then the second hotkey that we press will be the K because we want to send an item to the GM layer. And now we're going to give our button a title. We'll say to GM layer. And you can always put a line break in there like that to, so that the text stacks. And just like before, we can give this an icon. I'm going to use this little downward arrow for this. And there we go. Now we're going to jump back and we're going to highlight our token and we're going to press the 2GM layer button. And when I do that, we see now that that token has been moved to the GM layer. Now, additionally, we have been moved to the GM layer as well. That because when you move something to that layer, maybe you want to move around. Maybe this skeleton turned invisible. Maybe there's uh, some other reason why you'd want to manipulate it further on this layer. But we are now on the GM layer. And the way that we would switch back to our other layers is by going back to the toolbar or you guessed it, we can create another stream deck button that will allow us to switch between the layers in roll 20. So let's do that. Let's grab another hotkey. I'm just going to drag that right on here. I'm going to say objects, right? Because we want to jump to the objects layer. And the hotkey for that is just O. And we'll give this one its own icon as well. I'm going to be really creative and just use the letter O for that. And now when we press that button, you see, we switch back to the objects layer. So let's send another skeleton to the GM layer. So I'm going to press the GM layer button. There we go. They have been sent to the GM layer. I'm going to press O now and we're back on the objects layer. So this really speeds up your navigation between the layers of roll 20. And we can, of course, create other buttons that do the exact same thing to take us to the other layers. Let me do that real fast. OK, so what I've done is I've just gone in and created buttons for the map layer and the hotkey for that is just going to be the M. The GM layer is just going to press the letter K and to move to the dynamic lighting layer. That's just the comma key. So now you see I've got roll 20 has focus again. We're currently on the objects layer. If I press the M button, we're moved to the map. If I press the G, we're on the GM layer. And if I press the L button, we are on the dynamic lighting layer. So now we've got a really fast and easy way to switch between the layers in Roll20, and it just helps smooth out gameplay even more. Now, the final thing I'll show you is how to run Roll20 macros from your stream deck. And the first thing we need to do is make sure we have a macro. So in this game, I have a very simple macro called D20. And when I run this, 
All it does is roll a 20 sided die. Now, because there isn't a way to set up keyboard shortcuts for macros in Roll20 without installing special browser extensions and writing extensive amounts of JavaScript, we need to get a little creative. So this JavaScript, courtesy of the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron, thank you, Aaron, for everything that you do, this will execute a Roll20 macro. So if I copy this code and paste it into my browser's address bar, and for some reason, it doesn't always like to keep the JavaScript prefix here, so I'm going to key that back in manually. But if I run this, you see it ran my macro again. It rolled another D20. So what we're going to do is have the stream deck set focus into our browser's address bar and then paste in this command and run it, and that will execute our macro. So I'm going to copy this again so I have it on my clipboard. And now let's go back into the stream deck. And again, what we're going to have here is another multi-action. Let's drag that on here. And our first multi-action is going to be a keystroke to set focus to the browser's address bar. So we're just going to say set address. And in Chrome and Firefox, the hotkey to do that is F6. If you're using a different browser, refer to that browser's documentation to see exactly what you're supposed to press there. But this works for Chrome and for Firefox. So we're setting focus to the address bar, and then we're going to not use a hotkey, but we're going to use text. We're going to paste in that browser command that you just saw me using. And we're going to call this the D20 macro. And then after we put that in, we need to press the enter key on our keyboard. So that's another hotkey, and that's just going to be enter, and we'll hotkey assign that, and it shows up as return. Okay, so we're setting the address bar, we're pasting in that macro code, we're pressing enter, and now let's give this a title, we'll call it D20 macro, and let's give it an icon. Just gonna go with this target for right now. And now the important thing to remember here is you need to make sure your browser window has focus when you press the buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that. And there we go, you saw we set focus to the address bar, we entered the command, we pressed enter, and then we got another D20 roll right here. And I can do it again, and there we go. The great thing about this is you can just change this bit of text to match your macro's name, and you'll be able to run any macro in this fashion. But the important thing to remember here is this is case sensitive, so it has to be exactly as the name of your macro appears in Roll20. So you see over here, my macro is lowercase d20. If I had this be a capital D20, like if I come in here and I actually edit this, and I change that to be capital D20, this will not work because it is case sensitive. So I'm gonna try again now. And you see that it just sent in D20 because I don't have a macro called uppercase D20. So you always wanna make sure that whatever is inside your text here matches the name of the macro exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and put that back. And now let's try again. And there you go. Now the macro is running successfully. So before I close out, there's just a couple of other things I want to show you. This is the Stream Deck profile that I use in my Roll20 games. You can see I've got the buttons to move between the layers. There's another hotkey, which is the letter Y, which will open up the turn order window, which can be handy before you roll initiative. I've got my ruler. I've got the 2GM layer. I've got another one just like the 2GM layer that moves things to the objects layer. That's another multi-action, and that's by pressing the letter L and then the letter O. And then I also have a couple of my macros that use mods like group initiative and group check. I've done videos on both of those mods before, but effectively they're the exact same thing as that D20 macro that I showed you, except that they're calling the group init macro that I have rather than the D20 macro. Additionally, you may remember that at the beginning of the video, I said you could launch websites and other applications. So one of the other approaches I use with the Stream Deck is when I actually set up my game. So I have this operation here called Scarlet Citadel Setup. This is for my Friday night game. And this is a list of all the operations that I'm performing. So I have the Stream Deck open up my voice changing application. I have it launch Discord. I have it launch Roll20. I have it launch a map 
that Kobold Press put out. I have it launch my notes page. I use Notion to keep notes and all my commands. And then I have it also pull up the PDFs for the Midgard campaign setting, which is where the adventure takes place, and the PDF of the adventure itself. I find it's really helpful to have the PDFs of the adventure I'm running available because it's faster to search in those rather than going through Roll20. Not only can it handle operations within the campaign, it can also take care of your pre-flight operations to make sure you've got everything ready when game night rolls around. So there you have it. That's how you can automate operations in Roll20 using a Stream Deck. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link down in the video description where you can buy a Stream Deck. Admittedly, it's not for everybody, but I found it really does help smooth out so many things in my workflow, not just in the game, but in my own video production and in a lot of other applications that I use as well. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.